I'm asking you to determine between which consecutive integers. So if you don't know what a consecutive integer is, like 2, 3, 4, 5, um, negative 10, negative 11, what are consecutive integers? I just gave you examples. Numbers right next to each other. And the integers, a whole integer next to a whole integer. No decimals, just between integers. Two whole numbers, okay? So you're going to put this in your calculator right now. Put x to the third minus 4x plus 2. And some of you might just be able to, like, look at from here. For those who don't know, when you do zoom 6, your calculator is doing, it's going up by 10, down by negative by 10, negative 10, to the right 10 and to the left 10. Even though it doesn't look as square as it should, each one of these is is one unit, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Everything up is one, two, three, four, five. However, we're only concerning ourselves with this interval between negative four and negative and four, excuse me, between negative four and four. So I actually am only concerning myself with like this picture window right in here. Sometimes they have, may have even said between zero and four, so then I would have only concerned myself about like this section here. So I can show you on the calculator how to change your window setting. If you go to window and hit for your X min, you want it to be negative four. And then your X max would just be four. And leave everything else the same. Leave it at negative 10, 10, whatever. And now go to the graph. Well, now you've actually got the actual window that the book wants you to look at. So the question again is, between which consecutive integers are the real zeros? And I've talked about this previously. When you see zeros, get it in your head that that means x intercepts. That that also can mean solutions. It can also mean roots, but in this case, real roots. They're real roots. There are imaginary roots, but these all could be the same thing, essentially. So where is my first root located at between what two integers? Where's the x-intercept? Negative 3 and negative 2, right? Right there and there. So between negative 3 and negative 2. Where's the next one? Zero and one. Zero and one. There's a root right there. Zero and one. Where's the next one? Doesn't it, There's an x-intercept right there also? Between one and two. There's three real zeros. And that's your answer. That's all you have to do. They ask you questions like this on um, SATs all the time, PSATs. They want you to understand really that real zeros are where it crosses the x-axis. And then they want you to just tell me the integers. You don't actually have to find the numbers. You can find the numbers. They, uh, you can do your, your calculator will find the zeros for you, but we'll do that in a, a later time. Okay. Why do the x and x max matter? There, I'm going to give you just the window. Because if I had changed that window, let's say I had changed the window to 0, 4. Now look at what I'm asking you. How many times is it intercepting the y-axis now? I mean the x-axis now. Now it only has two, right? So I've eliminated this first one. So depending on what they ask you for is how many x-intercepts you want in that window, in that interval. All right. I really think they teach you end behavior because what eventually is going to happen is we're going to learn how to graph a function without the calculator. And you'll start to see that all of the polynomial functions start to have the same end behavior, most of them. So let me actually draw two graphs for you right here. We'll do this one. And then we'll just do good old Mr. Parabola. Okay, and it's really easy tonight for homework. You are just pretty much filling out the following phrase. You look at the ends of the graph. You don't have to worry yourself about the middle. 
like I said, we're going to be doing that in a later point. But you put the function in your calculator, you look at the ends, and you answer the following question. As x approaches infinity, meaning as x gets more and more positive, what kind of y value do I get out? As x gets more and more negative, what kind of y value do I get out? So this is what you're answering. But you write down this whole thing. So it's really kind of more about notation right now, kind of understanding notation. As x gets more and more positive, what's your y values? As x gets more and more negative, what's your y values here? So let's look at this picture real quick. As x is getting more and more positive, meaning pretend I actually made this graph go all the way to like 100, what kind of y value am I getting out? A negative, right? So as x is getting more and more large, large, this is our whole thought, isn't y getting more and more largely negative? So the way you write that is negative infinity. Well, what happens as x gets more and more largely negative? It goes, the y value would become positive infinity. That's your answer. That's what you'll have to do on homework tonight. What about this one? As x gets more and more positive, and then as x gets more and more negative, you finish the second half. You actually fill this in out. Y goes where? Where does y go to? Let's see. As x gets more and more positive, so here I am at 100. What kind of y value am I getting out? A positive infinity. I'm getting more and largely, more and more largely, more and more large. What about when x gets more and more negative? Still getting positive, right? So positive, positive, that can happen. Plus two. Hit zoom six, go back to your standard view so that way you can see it. Looks like it's going like this. Okay. Again, you only worry about the ends. So how do I write this? So you say this. As x gets more and more negative, what does y become? As x gets more and more positive, what does y become? I think I said it backwards on the other side. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you fill in this correctly. So as x is getting more and more negative, well, here's the x-axis, here's its negative. What kind of y values are they doing? Negative. They're getting negative. They're going toward negative infinity. They're, getting, they're going down. That's what the end is headed. It's headed toward down on this side. But as x gets more and more positive... What kind of y values are happening here? Positive. They're going up. They're getting positive. More and more higher and higher. There you go. That's how homework is tonight. Type in this one. Negative x to the sixth. So you should know what both of these are headed toward right now. What are your y values? If both the ends are going this way, what are your y values going toward then? negative infinity. So you would say, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, y is still going to negative infinity. Both of them are headed in a negative direction. All right, but we got one more to talk about this fraction one. Please, again, make sure you put parentheses when you type this in. Because... There's something, and I know you've, you've heard of this before. There's this, um, it looks like it's leveling off right here and right here, correct? There, this is called an asymptote. So as x is getting more and more negative, what's y approaching? And then as x is getting more and more positive, what's y approaching? So I want you to look at this in a table of values first, and then we'll actually talk about it. But if I go to my table of values and I start my table at a really large negative number, like negative 100. And I'm just going to go up by ones. You could, well, I'll go up by 0 0.01. Here's negative 100. What does that look like it's headed toward? 3.05, right? Let's get even larger. Let's set our table set at negative 1,000. 3.05. 
let's go to negative a couple zeros here. Just want to see if my calculator will change. Huh. Where am I headed for now? Three. That's at negative a million, by the way. Three. Now my calculator went straight, solid three. So as x is getting more and more negative toward negative, what is y headed toward? Three. three. You actually don't say infinity. It's not going to a, a large negative number. It's actually headed toward three. Same thing on this side. As x is getting more and more positive, again, if I change my table to be now positive, like a million, look at your table. It goes toward three. That's because you're headed toward this asymptote right there. It's approaching that asymptote as you get more and more large, negative and positive. That's it. I mean, so this is what your answer tonight is going to be. It's either going to be like negative infinity, positive infinity, both of them are negative. It could approach a three. It could approach an actual